Hello world, welcome back to another tutorial! Today we're going to be doing a refactor because in the next episode I want to do an episode on the MTL render pass descriptor and how to do multiple render passes and do cool post-processing effects and you know, maybe not all next episode but coming up soon I'm going to be doing these things and I need to do a refactor because I don't want to do a refactor in those episodes because that's just going to take time and confuse the hell out of you. So, this is going to be a refactor episode, just a couple quick changes, should be pretty fast. Uh, but before we get into that, I just want to show you that I have all the code that I've ever done on any of the YouTube series all compiled right here on my GitHub. As you can see, I have start it and you should start it too. Um, because, you know, like the, the president will vote for himself if he runs for president. I'm going to star myself, right? So yeah, basically this is the Metal Game Engine tutorial. There's all sorts of stuff in here. I've organized it by branch. So here you have master and then compute kernel functions, metal pipeline. Every single episode is just kind of inside of here and if you want to check out that code just go click on it and then um, the code will allow you to download that so I made it nice and simple for you let's jump into the refact okay so let's start in the display renderer class uh, because there's some things down here in this function that are driving me wild so basically every single time this draw gets called you know hopefully it's every 60th of a second um, we are calling the scene manager tick scene and if you were to jump into tick scene this does updating and rendering which means that anytime we actually want to render the scene we need to also update it again and we don't want to do that so i'm going to split this out into two separate functions first i'm going to create the public static func update right here and we will pass in our delta time from this function leave the render command encoder there because this will then become the render function. So we'll be able to call update and then do all sorts of rendering. Um, let's just move all the update code up into update. And that should work just fine. In order to use these two new functions, we need to jump back into the renderer. So let's go back to the renderer. And instead of calling tick scene right here, let's call render. At the very top, after draw, just say scene manager dot update. And we'll pass in this delta time right here. Bam, bam, bam. And then this will be one touch. Cool. And then, yeah, this all looks great. I'm going to go ahead and move everything together that needs to be together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the command buffer up. I'm going to move the render pass descriptor down. And then I am going to change some things. So this is called render pass descriptor. That's not very descriptive. Uh, of course, it's a render pass descriptor. But what pass descriptor is it? Well, I am going to use the clever name instead of render pass descriptor. We are going to be using, I don't know, first render pass descriptor. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to call it the scene render pass descriptor because that's what it's doing. It's rendering the scene. And then right here, I will say scene here and starting scene render there. I'm also going to rename this command buffer to the base command buffer. And now when we run our game and we go here to the capture, we will then be able to see these beautiful labels laid out um, back here. So we have base command buffer. And if I click that, you'll see that it comes up with this little display. And inside we have the scene render command encoder with our two color attachments. And speaking of the scene manager, um, we're going to go back into the scene manager. And I'm going to basically delete this public static func initialize. I think it's kind of silly because if we just call set scene, it's exactly the same. See, set initialize sets the scene. That's all it does. So anywhere we want to set the scene, let's just do that. And the place I'm going to do that for now, uh, because we don't have like any game logic actually built out yet. We have a scene, but we don't have like a game. Uh, I'm just going to put that in the renderer. So I will say scene manager dot uh, set the scene to preferences dot starting scene type. Awesome. Now that does it for the renderer. Let's jump into the game view and look at one small mistake I made a long time ago. And that's basically we're creating a renderer and then we're igniting our engine. I think we should do that the opposite way. I think that the renderer should be able to access the device through the engine. And in order for it to do that, we need to execute engine.ignite first and then self.renderer equals renderer to self. So that's a little bug I did a long time ago. Uh, it's gonna fix a lot of problems for a lot of you. So the next thing I've been dying to fix for a really, really long time is uh, our entities. So. When you think of entity, I don't think of like a mesh or a texture. I think of a node or a game object. Those are entities. These are assets. Textures and meshes are assets. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. Let's rename this to asset. And then let's go into this entities class right here. Just drop a refactor, rename, 
wait like 10 minutes. And once it's finally loads, you just go ahead and call it assets. So anywhere that we're using our meshes, this is gonna take a little bit, oh, this is gonna take a little bit to get used to, but basically we'll just call assets.textures and then we'll pass it in the texture type. The next thing I wanna refactor is over in the libraries, basically inside of texture types, I want to have the ability to set texture from outside. Uh, we currently have the ability to set texture for that texture inside of this class, um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make this private. So this texture is gonna be private for now. If we wanna make it public in the future, we can, um, but for now it's private. And I'm gonna create a function up here. So func set texture that takes in a texture type, which is a texture type. And it will take in a texture, which is an actual MTL texture. Easy. Now, basically with set texture, all we really need to do is say library dot update value for key. We need to pass in our texture. It's of type texture, which is down here. And we need to create an initializer that takes in a texture. So init texture, MTL texture. And we'll basically just say self.texture, texture. And then right here we will say texture, texture, easy. Uh, for key, let's do texture type. And that will either create or replace whatever exactly exists already. So that is how we are gonna be able to set textures from outside. We're gonna need that in the next metal render pass. So promise. And there you have it. We're back to normal in our game engine. Everything looks perfect and peachy. We didn't really do too much, but you know, for the completionists after there out there, I wanted to just show you the little refactors that I did. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and commit this to that GitHub that I showed you at the beginning of the episode. Thank you everybody who's helping me on Patreon. Thank you for all the likes, the subscribes, all the warm compliments and comments. Uh, you guys are amazing. I appreciate everything you're doing. And uh, let's keep building this game engine. Thanks for watching. See you next time.